Hello, fellow alcohol inkers. My name is Terry Jones, and I am one of the contributing editors to um, the Alcohol Ink Art community. Um, I am going to go over for you uh, different um, tools that I use. So what I use to control my alcohol inks, and I will give you a short video in a moment showing them to you. Thank you for joining me, and it's so nice to meet you guys. Thanks. So um, the first thing with alcohol inks is there's so many different ways of using them. You can use them very loosely. You can actually paint with them. And you need different tools for different uh, things. So the first thing that I, use, I started doing with alcohol inks is direct nozzle painting. And direct nozzle painting is you just take the actual ink and you tip the nozzle to the paper and you can use that in order to get the ink on the paper. As you do this back and forth, you can, as you can see, kind of layer some colors. They'll mingle together on the paper. You can do a variety of different, um, you know, different things, but you could act, you can actually paint and put the ink on the paper directly. Uh, the second easiest thing to do with alcohol inks is literally just let them go with the flow. So here I am just kind of after nozzle painting, um, I'm just letting the gravity pull the inks down in a variety of ways. And then the next thing you can do with alcohol inks is you can use alcohol itself. What you'll see is alcohol, like the inks, will go in almost perfect circles most of the time. See here, perfect circle comes out. When I pick it up, it moves. So alcohol inks are just really interesting to play with and you can make all sorts of patterns and they will combine in a variety of ways. This is really fun if you're working with abstract painting. Um, you know, I can just kind of play a little bit on this piece of paper. I can use some alcohol, which ends up with a lot of these colors, kind of splitting it into different colors. Here, I'm just holding it up and playing with it. So that was kind of, that was the first thing I ever did with alcohol inks. Okay, just little dips and dots and watch how they flow. The alcohol causes the inks to just slide on the surface and um, and then I love the way they mix together. Okay, so that's one way. Now the second thing that I've done with the alcohol inks is that I use a variety of tools. And the first tool I ever learned to use was actually a straw. So here I go again, I'm gonna just use this this straw and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put another line down and what you're going to see me do is I'm just going to gently move this with this straw and kind of muddle the puddle and bring them together so you can see that I get a little bit of of the feeling of mountains or hills. Um, I use the straw a lot um, to just kind of gently get the colors to mix together. Okay, so then the other thing that I can use with alcohol inks um, is we can do a variety of, um, of drops and blowing techniques. So I can use either blending solution or I can use alcohol and then I can put some of the color in the blending solution and then I can blow it with either this kind of a blower which gives you some really interesting shapes or with the more traditional I'm going to blow with a, this is literally a can of, 
of air. This is the way Kimberly does. A lot of people do flowers for this. And um, I love, of, love the way it works. Um, this is also another way that you can get these kind of fading looks that come around in different, different ways of blowing it. Um, I do not recommend blowing it with a straw. The problem is when you blow out, you are going to then want to bring a breath in and nobody has the discipline to pull back and you don't want to br breathe in the fumes of, of the alcohol, um, the alcohol itself. So like you can take this and put a dot in it and then uh, I'm going to take this again and I'm going to blow again. And there's a whole, you can learn all sorts of, of ways of working with this. I am not, this is not my, my forte, but what you can see is you can get lots of different beautiful patterns happening here. Um, if you like, so here I've got more, just, I'm just working on, on getting some interesting patterns and, and I can use this as the basis for something else, which is the next thing I'm going to talk about, which is actually painting with a, with a brush. Now, when I paint with a brush, I can do one of two things. I can, again, I can go and put a dot down here and I can use that dot and I can manipulate it with a brush in any way that I want to manipulate it, okay? Or I can take the ink and I can put it in a palette here and then I can fill the the brush with the ink and then I also can either paint with it or slide it and just use, you know, some kind of, of brushwork we can play with here. So brushes work. I can, a lot of times if I'm trying to paint something more specific, I will use a brush. Um, and there's all sorts of different kinds of brushes. There's a round brush. There is a flat brush. So here, if I'm trying to make something that looks particularly square, I might use a flat brush. Um, there is a, this is a deer foot brush, which I think Vera loves because this one, you can get some really nice patterns as long as your alcohol is fair or your inks are fairly dry. So there's a deer foot brush and then there's one called a rigger, which is really long and thin. This is more like the rigger brush. Um, so this one would would give me very nice, fine lines. And um, then there's the fan brush. There's endless amounts of brushes. Okay, the other thing that we do with alcohol ink sometimes is we take away the inks. And... Um, I can use a Q-tip that's been dipped in alcohol, and what you'll see is after the ink is dry, I can clear out an area of, of the inks. If I want to clear out a little circle, I can do it. Here's a Q-tip. So I use Q-tips, and the other thing that I use is the ones that look more like makeups, the makeup uh, Q-tips. I like these also. They they have a much finer tip, so sometimes I can make much finer lines with it. Along that line is something, and I also can paint with these. A lot of times I will go and take this and use it to, to put, to make very small dots. See, I've reconstituted the alcohol here, and see how I can make very small dots. So a lot of people say I can't get any control of the alcohol ink, but there are tools that allow you to get that control. So put it on, take it off. Now there's also the blending pens, 
which will blend. Let's say I don't like this area here and I want to blend it into a softer spot. So here I've used this blending pen and it's just blended all this color together. Um, I can take two colors together and use the blending pen if I want. I have to get another color in here somewhere. So let's say I want, I have that brown and I have the other color and I want to blend it, kind of pull some of the other colors in. The blending pens have a little bit of blending solution in them. And so you can soften and blending, blend the colors together. And they usually have a, a, um, a tip that's like a marker and they also have a tip that's much finer. A lot of times I will use the bent blending pens to pull out color. Again, just like the, just like the, um, the Q-tips, if I'm trying to get a very, very fine white line, this blending pen does a fabulous job of getting me a very fine white line. Now, I must say that it's best to do it on either the graphics or the Nara paper because other papers aren't as good. Now, this one is an Arteza, the Everblend Art Marker. These were actually designed for the, um, the actual markers themselves because you can see this is an alcohol ink marker. So I can use the blending pen to lighten, to blend the color together, kind of color it in. You can see how that changed. Now I've brought some of this, uh, some of the, the, the blue ends up becoming more um, green. It's a great way to make a, uh, a pear or something like that. So alcohol ink markers are another solution. What I like about alcohol ink markers is, is if you have just a fine little place, let's say I just want to color in yellow right in this spot. If I tried to do that with a brush and with yellow, it, I'd, it'd be much more difficult than if I just come here and do it with a marker, the alcohol ink marker. So you can see you have a lot more control with the alcohol ink markers. Now, another thing that is actually alcohol ink are Sharpies. So here I've got this orange Sharpie, which I can make a very, very fine line with. Or you also have to always clear, kind of clean off the edges. The alcohol ink blending pens have to be cleaned off. Or I can take this and blend that into a, a, a softer color if I want. So there you can see that's blended into a much softer, softer color. So, and the Sharpies come in lots and lots of different colors. The blending pens come in lots and lots of different colors. And there's all sorts of different kinds of blending pens. Um, Ranger has a blending pen. Their old blending pens, I think, are better than their newer ones. Uh, but still, if I'm trying to make a really soft color, do you see how nicely that kind of evens out and blends in that color? You can get very much of a watercolory look by, by using blending pens. So that's this blending pen. Then there's tools called Fantastics. And the Fantastics come in little packages like this. Uh, this is a combo pack. And the combo pack has two different kinds of, of points. One of them is a, um, is what they call a, uh, this is a fantastic, and this is a, br a brush point. And as you can see, this one's very dirty. I would actually put it aside and use it <clears throat> just for reds because I don't want to waste a lot of effort trying to get it clean. But what I really like about the brush part 
is that you can end up with some really beautiful ways it kind of like a marker but you can pick what color you want and as you can see or hopefully you can see i can use this as a brush and i can really get some beautiful kind of constant color without any of those lines a lot of times i have difficult time with alcohol inks because i want to maybe put a background color in but i don't want a lot of of lines and something like this this uh, brush tip will allow you to do that and and, uh, and then the bullet tip i really like because it's really great at taking things off so if i'm trying to clean out a really large area I will use the bullet tip and a paper towel and as you can see I can clean this this is a piece of graphics uh, paper and I can clean this all the way back to white should I choose the secret is that you dampen the tip you pull off the ink and then you wipe it on something because if I do end up with ink, a lot of ink on this, instead of wiping up, it puts down. So I have to clean it off to get it to wipe it up, okay? So there's all sorts of other things that I use with alcohol inks. I use stencils, but when I use stencils, I usually use one of the stamper pads and I, um, this one is, are the foam pads. This is the mini round stamper by Ranger. And if I'm using this with a stencil, what I need to do is to make sure that it is fairly, um, not real, real wet. I don't want it to be super, super wet. And so what I'm going to do is just gently stamp in And then when I pull it up, you'll see that you have a really nice design. Um, you can also use stuff. I love this. This one's one of my favorite ones. This is a um, this is a great texture maker. This is drywall tape. So again, I just kind of stamp it in, and then I pull it up. Now, if you stamp too much, if it's too wet, what you will get is this little, like those, the areas that just kind of go wild. So you can actually use, do the same kind of thing in that if you go on, let's say I wanted a slightly different pattern, I can actually use this as a stamp. And if I've put the ink on the other side it'll make a pattern that pattern does not is not as easily done as stencils um, what i use mostly for that technique is something like i, I love um, bubble wrap because i can take bubble wrap and here i go i'm just putting just a little bit of of the ink on that and then i'm going to create some texture with the bubble wrap. I like to do this. Um, I love, I've, I've done a whole series of flowers using bubble wrap as the beginning of the flower, as, as the kind of a beginning of flowers. Um, but that's a really fun thing to do too. And then after, um, so, and there's 10 million other things you can do. I mean, some people like to drop little drops. This is a this is a pipette and you can take little drops of you can either pick ink up with this or you can pick alcohol up with it and put little drops in. Um I can I can pick some you know if I want to if I want to drop a few drops of of ink on I can use the pipette to do that. And um, 
I have I use sometimes these nailing these nail tools. So this has a really tiny end to it. Um, and it will make little dots too. See how this makes really nice little dots. So I just take some dip it in, put it in my palette and it makes very nice little dots. Um, I think Kimberly uses this a lot for the centers of her flowers. And then there's also these dental picks. And again, I can draw with the dental picks. I can make dots with the dental picks. I can make lines with the dental picks. And I can use them if I'm trying to remove something really, really, really fine. So if I wanna if I wanna put a fine line up in something, I can use this dental pick to to get a really fine line. So here I've got this nice, well, I've got to put more alcohol on it. But you can see where it made a fine line. Um, so those are a lot of the tools. Needle-nosed, um, little needle-nosed bottles. Again, you can do the same thing. You can nozzle paint with a needle-nosed bottle. But this one I happen to, sometimes I think stream is too bold. So I've got half stream, half blending solution. So it's a, it's more of a, instead of the deep, deep, dark color that stream comes out, this ends up being more of a teal color. Um, one of the, uh, I, I used to use a lot of pinata and I still do, but the pinata inks are really, really, really deep. So they have Claro extender that you can use, um, which will help with um, making it less uh, pigmented. And I love that color. That's actually a beautiful color. So there's just so many different things to do. And after it's all done, if it's dry, I frequently use gel pens on it. So let's say I wanted to, to pretend like I want to get a flower shapes happening here. I don't have to totally define the flower shapes. I can use a gel pen. I could use a Sharpie. Or I could use an acrylic pen like a Posca pen. Or this one is a, a less expensive acrylic pen, but I really like it. So you can use these pens to improve a design, play with a design, just kind of make your, make your painting start singing with just a little calligraphy. So I love alcohol inks and I love all of the different tools that we have that we can play with. Um, there's something called a mini mister which I use every once in a while to just give a little texture. So here I've just put a little more texture in that spot. So it really depends on what you want to use all of this for um, but there's just so many different options. This, this is, um, let's say I want to put some really interesting, I'm trying to figure out what color I want to put in here. I'm going to, I'm going to end up with a little bit of, a, I, I want to look like there's a little dots. So here I've used the felt pa pad as a stamper. And I can come in here and play a little bit with a little more texture. Um, I love using this for trees and for fl wildflowers in a field. Um, there's lots of different things I can do. I could put other colors in with it. I don't have to just stick with one color. Um, I can end up here. I'm going to put some some yellow in it and then I'm going to see what happens when I decide I'm going to place it right there. Give me a little more 
Sometimes I do entire backgrounds with this kind of a thing. So those are all of the different ways that we can play uh, with alcohol ink. I hate to waste anything, so I ended up doing some final steps on this piece using the techniques I just showed you, and I will post that on my page and my YouTube channel. Thank you. Come learn, create, and share with us. It's a life-changing opportunity. Excite.